L. Lawlier, the most accomplished student from Whammy's house, as well as the greatest detective to grace the earth. He solved countless cases, and though he wasn't able to solve the Kira case, or really just close it, the ones who inherited his will did, and those two were Nier and Mello. Both of them desperately wanted to surpass L, with Mello in particular taking extreme measures to ensure his victory over not just Nier, but an extension L. Nier, however, is seen as the true successor to L by many fans. His name inherently, Nate River, symbolizes that Nier's natural talent flaw from L, hence why he's considered the natural successor, even though Nier and Mello were able to defeat Light Yagami, the big bad of the series, and solve the Kira case. Did they end up surpassing L in the end, however, or was L always staying at the top, alone, surpassed by nobody? Let's find out. VCI, or Verbal Comprehension Index, is the body of knowledge and abilities acquired throughout our lives that enable us to cope with the majority of problems we encounter in everyday life. Watery has the most diverse and advanced library in the world, located at Whammy's from which the children are free to read, extract knowledge, and also improve their verbal comprehension. As early as they introduced, we see a younger Mello reading countless books in the manga to surpass Nier. We actually don't see Nier reading too much, but we know that Mello's efforts were for naught, and Nier ended up consistently scoring first place in the constant assessments they had for the fourth generation of Whammy's house. So how does L compare? Well, we know that L was the highest achieving student from Whammy's house, and essentially became the goalpost that the students of Whammy house should try to reach. L's VCI is truly unmatched, as he was able to solve a complex crossword puzzle created by Beyond Birthday, another student of Whammy's house. That very same crossword puzzle had left the best investigators the country had to offer and dozens of police agencies confused. For this reason, verbal comprehension goes to L. Working memory index plays a key role in intelligence. It is the component of intelligence that enables us to consciously process information. Its capacity is limited, making it a bottleneck of the cognitive system. The more information we can process at the same time and the higher speed that we can do so, the more we can solve complex problems. L's best feat in WMI or working memory, processing large amounts of information at a time. The highest scale at which Nier has replicated this feat is in Death Note Chapter 91. Nier is seen holding information from a couple monitors mounted throughout the room, each transmitting various sources of information, some which are different languages. It stated L could do something similar in the data book, and that it's about brain capacity. Arguably, L in Death Note is way better than Nier in raw brain capacity. However, it's Nier and Mellow, so if you quantify it, who knows? The manga narrative is a bit weird at some times. If it was more canon material for L, you could definitely say for a definite answer that L takes everything on this list sometimes. But for now, it's a bit messy. But what we can give here is that L in the BB murder case is solving cases at the same time. He's even doing this in manga death note, where in between before and after meeting Light at uni was a couple months where L had to still cover different cases off screen. He also carries the three titles of the top detectives in the world. Remember, in the BB murder case, he said that L solved 3,500 cases in his career. So, working memory index goes to L, and this is before Kira, by the way, when he solves those cases. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe. I'm trying to make more Death Note content and other series in the future, like your favorites, like Tomodachi Game, Musugoi, and Lai Game. All those different series, we'll be covering those in the future, so subscribe. FRI, or Fluid Reasoning Index, measures a general problem-solving ability that consists in extracting the underlying rules of a problem situation and then using them to solve the problem posed. It therefore involves implementing a chain of inductive and deductive reasoning. This is the general approach that allows humans to tackle problems they may encounter for which they have no specific procedure acquired for experience or education. Since L's FRI is pretty universally known and will be told in more detail in the future with his deductive, abductive, inductive and abstract reasoning, we'll go over Nier's best feat in fluid reasoning index. And this would be his final plan, which I'll break down. As set up, Nier meets up with the members of the SPK and the MPA at the Yellow Box Warehouse, intending to close out the Kira case. However, Nier is seen wearing a mask, which he remarks is as for insurance. Nier is confident that both X Kira and L Kira have no idea as to what Nier looks like. However, he is fully aware that the identity of everyone else at the meeting but himself are known to both of them. He had calculated that there existed a feasible possibility that Kira had written down the names of everyone else and had scheduled them to die on the time and the date of the meeting, which would allow El Kira to kill Nier following the mass execution using either his bare hands or the notebook Aizawa is currently bearing. Knowing that El Kira does not hold the Shinigami eyes, but that X Kira most definitely does, once all the other members had died in the complete preemption, Nier supposes that X Kira would simply be able to obtain his name while just looking at his face and kill him per L's command, thus justifying the mask he's currently wearing. Nier therefore suggests they wait 30 minutes 
so as to be certain that no one is currently being controlled by the notebook. Nia, having taken off the mask, then informs the others that they will need to wait some more before they are able to close out the case. They must give enough time for the one, which will solve anything, being Mikimi, to arrive at the warehouse. Nia is sure that Mikimi will come soon enough and that he will likely try to take a peek through the one and only entrance to the warehouse, a sliding door. Nia explains to the other members present that ex -Cura, as the loyal and faithful servant of Kira, who had executed the killings in the first place, had been informed of the meeting's conditions, location, time, etc. by L. Kira. Nia asks if Aizawa had kept an eye on L, aka Light Yagami, who is L, after Takada had been kidnapped and killed. When he confirms it, Nia concludes that L. Kira had talked to ex Kira through Takada based on the fact that he and Light had set the conditions for the meeting. Light had met with Takada, which would have given him the opportunity to ask her to relay information about the meeting to Mikimi. Nia aims to apprehend Mikimi in the act, fully aware that Mikimi had been judging on the behalf of Kira and that he will attempt to write his name once he arrives. In other words, Nia's main aim is to prove that Mikimi is ex Kira by having him try to kill him. Once Mikimi arrives and starts to write the names, Nia knows that the other members of both the SBK and MPA are currently under immense pressure and fear. Nier therefore decides to reveal his plan, hoping to reassure them that their safety is not at stake. His first plan was to tamper with the notebook Mikimi carried around with him by replacing some of its pages. Based on Mikimi's habits, Nier had calculated which page would end up being used on the 28th, and from there had replaced all the subsequent pages so that when Mikimi would try to write the names of the SBK and MPA, it would have no effect. Nier then assumes that once Mikimi is finished, he will undoubtedly try to walk into the warehouse to see if it all worked and his targets are dead. He then plans to seize and confiscate the notebook from Mikimi's hands to see which names among all the participants had not been written down, thus identifying and proving Kira's identity. When Light confidently asks Mikimi to the one outside if had he been finished writing the names, and Mikimi answers him back, Nier finds it very strange that Ex-Kira had replied earnestly. Of course, Nier already knew that ex -Kira had been in charge of the killings based on his reasoning, but now he had actual emotional cue that both El Kira and ex -Kira are connected. Understanding that El Kira and ex -Kira are both overly confident in the success of their plan, Nier incites Mikimi to enter the warehouse by saying that, since he had already written all of the names down, there was no reason for him to be scared, hoping to apprehend him. Once 40 seconds have elapsed and no one has died, Nier asks Giovanni and Resta to arrest Mikimi and seize the notebook. Nier then looks at the names which have been written down and sees that only Light's name is missing, thus identifying him as El Kira. Of course, Light had already sold himself to Nier by saying that he won preemptively, and additionally that Mikimi had addressed him as... Kami, God. Nier then proceeds to explain that Light might have actually won by his clever use of Mikimi, whom he had instructed to carry a fake notebook around and use it publicly so as to mislead the SBK into believing that it was the real thing. However, Nier had realized this and tampered with both the fake, removed parts of the pages, and real replaced the entirety of the pages' notebooks. Nier then commends Giovanni's diligence and he was able to, with the aid of Resta, to recreate a completely indiscernible copy of the original notebook matching the exact details of its composition, the use of Mikimi's handwriting. Nier also explains that he was able to see Ryuk since he had touched the notebook prior to their meeting. He also purposely talks to him, remarking that he had always wondered what Shinigami looked like, and he had always assumed that they had skulls for faces and carried around sickles. So as to show to light that he is not lying, Nier also supposes, since some of the edges of the notebook are torn apart, the mere pieces of the notebook must be sufficient in carrying out its full effects. When Ryuk confirms this is true, Nier guesses that Light must have used this property of the notebook as an imaginable number of times. Imagine how many times he used it, as to deceive all who tried to stand in his way. With this situation unraveling, the answer is very clear to Nier. Light Yagami, L, is Kira. The result of this long confrontation has now unfolded. Nier has won on behalf of L and Mallow. Kira has been completely and utterly defeated. So how did Nier actually win, you may ask? Let us retrace what kind of sequence of events had developed, carrying Nier's victory and to Kira's demise. The explanations are mostly given in chapter 104. Nier gives all his credit of his victory to Mello, who had engineered this very situation by kidnapping Takada with his very unpredictable move, making his plan successful. Nier makes Light look at one of the pages of the fake notebook, which, keep in mind, has identical contents when compared to the real one. On this page, Mikimi had written down Takada's name when she was kidnapped, 
knowing that Light could not make any moves, fearing that she would reveal details about Kira to the police in the event of being captured. This means that Mikimi had taken out the real notebook, which was hidden in his very own safe deposit bank, to kill Takara. According to Giovanni, who had been instructed to probe Mikimi as to discern some of his habits, Mikimi went to the bank following the news of Takara's kidnapping. October 25th had been a Sunday, meaning that Mikimi went back to the bank on the 26th. However, Giovanni had noticed that Mikimi went to the bank on the 25th of each month prior to the meeting. September, October, November, and December. Therefore, when Mikimi had gone to the bank on the 25th of January and returned again on the 26th, when Takata was kidnapped, Giovanni found it extremely strange for him because it was very suspicious for an extremely methodical man to break his own clockwork habits. Once he entered the bank, Giovanni had spotted Mikimi heading down for the safe deposit room where for once, he had seemed to be nervous about someone following him. Nia proceeds to explain that Mikimi lives a completely fixed lifestyle, but that suddenly, when Takata was kidnapped, he decided to go to the bank twice, thus breaking away from his predetermined lifestyle, which would seem very strange considering the results of Giovanni's long-term research. Nia then managed to sense the possibility of a fake notebook being carried around by Mikimi, realizing that he, under the orders of Kira, had purposely used the note in public and talked to himself, saying that he didn't have a Shinigami as to misdirect and lure the SBK agents into Light's trap. Nia then explains it wasn't hard for them to crack open Mikimi's safe since it was an old-fashioned one at the local bank. Furthermore, since Light had allowed the SBK to search Mikimi's belongings to create replicas of his key cards, which would give them full access to his possessions. Nia then notes that in the fake notebook, the notebook which Nia and the SBK had first replaced, one page was filled in with the names every day on a consistent basis, but that, in the real one, the writing jumps all the way from November 25th to January 26th, meaning that Light had tried to trick them by having Mikimi walk around with the fake notebook two months in advance. Additionally, before January 26th, the time of death regarding the killings remained unspecified, same as in the fake note. However, Takata's name was written down. All of the judgments for the 26th and the 27th had been rescheduled to the early hours of the 27th and the 28th respectively. In the fake note, however, no such times of death were specified after Takata's murder meaning that when Mikimi had written her name down on the 26th, he had also written down the names of those to be executed on the 26th and 27th. Nia then assumes that Mikimi could have executed criminals using scraps from the notebook. However, if he was writing them down from his home, then he could have suspected the possibility of cameras having been installed inside his room, which would have been revealed to the SPK, this particular property of the notebook. Of course, Mikimi did not want to take this risk. Nia understands that in order to make Mikimi's forged notebook look real, Lai had likely cut and passed down pages from the real notebook to Takata, so that she could have done the killings while this Mikimi was under surveillance. All Mikimi had to do was send her a list of people to be judged via cell phone or computer, and subsequently delete the data and traces. Nia also assumes, for the deaths on the 26th and 27th, Light might have had him send a list of criminals to be killed to Takata after she was abducted by Mello, but that Mikimi had written down the names just to be on the safer side. In the notebook, Nia mentions the fact that there have been no new killings of criminals on the 26th and 27th, meaning that Mikimi had been prohibited from taking it out until 28th. Nia also supposes that Light must have also tried to kill Takara, who was up until then in charge of the killings, using a scrap of the notebook, knowing that Light would have had one on him for this exact sort of occasion. By means of this, Nia had been able to stay one step ahead of Light and had partly anticipated his plan using Giovanni's collected information. Mikimi had unknowingly brought a fake notebook, which he thought was real to kill all the members of the MPA and SPK. Of course, Nia had purposely instructed Giovanni and Rest to craft and replace the entire notebook, knowing full well that it would have been way harder for Mikimi to perceive the difference had he tried to look for one. The final plan of Nia, along with Melo's intervention, is what allowed the Kira case to be solved at last. Surely L can't compare to his successes in this category as he died trying to solve the case. Well, no. Just because L died and failed to solve the Kira case doesn't automatically mean that Nia's fluid reasoning is greater than L's. In fact, had it not been for Mello's intervention and his death as well as Takata's kidnapping being broadcast, Nia would have ultimately lost to Light. It was that situation which is what caused Nia to rethink his strategy and consider the possibility of a fake notebook. You also need to remember that fluid reasoning isn't just based off problem-solving ability, as problem-solving ability also correlates to learning ability, which L excels at. L was able to use deductive, abductive, and inductive reasoning numerous times during the Kira case, the Kira case which required L to analyze and scrutinize over numerous amounts of cases, and scrutinize over numerous amounts of information. He had to work from zero. Nero Mello picked it up later, and we can see how they do against the case that L faced, the Kira case, 
in another video, so stay tuned. And L, at just eight years old, essentially became one of the best businessmen by foreseeing the rise of technology and advising Watari to invest. As a result, in just two years, he was able to make Watari the richest man on the planet by accurately analyzing the stock markets. For this reason, fluid reasoning goes to L. Visual Spatial Index, or VSI, is a measure of visual perception. This is the ability to analyze, encode, and mentally manipulate spatial forms. Researchers use tests such as block design or visual puzzle subtests to test one's visual spatial index. The BB murder case. L does something even more extraordinary than probably Nier's monitor hacks. During the BB murder case, L's not actually present at the crime scenes. Naomi Misora is functioning as L's assistant. She would have to explain the crime scene to L, giving him as much information as possible, despite not being physically present. L's thinking is so abstract that he can visualize the complicated layouts of all four murder scenes, as well as the locked door room designed by BB, utilizing vectorial physics. All L needs is a physical description from Naomi Misora. And I believe that L would take Visual Spatial Index. So yeah, FSIQ comfortly goes to L. But how about EQ? Emotional understanding is the ability to recognize, comprehend, and manage the emotions of others. It involves being aware of emotions, understanding their effects and causes, and being able to respond to them. L's best feat of emotional understanding would be able to grasp Light's emotions, motivations, and general psychological state without ever meeting him. This feat is even more insane when you understand the context that being Kira has absolute zero evidence of existing. So he's purely just an abstraction in L's head, whom he profiles from just the fact that criminals around the world are dying through impossible means, such as cardiac arrest. The fact of the matter is, L using abstract reasoning that defies logic was able to understand Light's emotions and personality, based on the fact that criminals were dying in unexplainable ways. The cure itself is a headache, as it literally involves elements above basic comprehension, such as Shinigami eyes, Shinigami themselves, and the Death Note. These are all objects or beings of high power involved in a mass murder case that had all the major investigative agencies around the world confused, but L was able to understand it all. Along with L himself being able to understand intrapersonally his own self, and he could reflect and be self-aware enough to assume that he and Kira are one and the same. In fact, he was certain. For this reason, emotional understanding goes to L. Emotional engagement is the ability to harness emotions to facilitate various cognitive activities, such as thinking and problem solving. L uses feelings of pride and superiority to motivate himself to solving the Kira case at any cost. He had a reputation to uphold, not just as the greatest detective, but the man who could solve the unsolvable. It doesn't help that he admits he's childish and hates to lose, but he's again self-aware, which gives him even more motivation to solve the puzzle. As for Mello, after being summoned to Roger's office back at Whammy's house, and is informed that L had passed away, Mello decides to take matters into his own hands, refusing to work with Nier out of sheer hatred, yet also acknowledges his paralleled potential. Mello leaves the orphanage at almost 15 years old, funneling his rage and drive into capturing Kira. He travels to America and quickly soars up to the top ranks of a huge criminal gang, eliminating mafia bosses who were beyond Kira's reach, as mentioned by his recently subordinated mobsters. Having witnessed his incredible intellectual skills and capabilities, the members of the mafia quickly came to trust and respect Mello, and thus submit to his lead, giving him the tools and fuel he requires to become number one. Mello's feat of emotional engagement may just sound like that of a genius child throwing a tantrum, but it goes far deeper once you understand Mello as a character. Due to the environment he grew up in, he obviously admired L. His desire to surpass Nia was to prove not just the institution that raised him, but to the world that he was something else. He was constantly overshadowed by Nia, and once L died, he lost the opportunity to be acknowledged by L himself. So him refusing to work with Nier and to build his own path necessary to solve the Kira case and beat Nier is bigger than just jealousy. He also intends to avenge L and probably put him to rest by completing the puzzle for him. For this reason, emotional engagement goes to Mello and Nier. Emotional management refers to regulating and facilitating emotions in oneself and others to achieve goals. So here is a bit of a split, intrapersonal and interpersonal. L has been able to stay calm in most intense situations, intrapersonal, even a situation that ultimately led to his death, he was still calm despite Watari dying in front of him. Nero and Mello, however, take this a bit further. Mello's most notable feat of emotional management would be keeping his composure during the second raid of the Mafia hideout, all the way between the death of virtually all the mobsters and up to the point where he is ready to put his life at stake if it means he can escape, even at the price of near fatal wounds. He had successively improvised his evasion on the spot under extreme pressure and conditions. 
all the while monitoring the activities of the raiders. What's even crazier is that despite having his real name revealed in front of him, as well as his life hanging by a thread due to Sericho threatening to write his name in the notebook, he still managed to call his bluff and keep calm. Nier's best feat of emotional management would be purposely managing Aizawa's emotions in chapter 94 of Death Note by convincing him that if he stays put and keeps his watch on L2, light, then Nier will be able to bring about Kira's downfall, a thought which motivates Aizawa into following his orders. For this reason, emotional management goes to both Nier and Melo. Emotional perception is perceiving, detecting, and deciphering emotions in faces, pictures, voices, and cultural artifacts. It also includes the ability to identify one's own emotions. Perceiving emotions represents the most basic aspect of emotional intelligence as it makes all of a processing of emotional information possible. In Chapter 64 of Death Note, the notebook had been stolen by Mello and the Mafia. Light under the guise of L2, or L's replacement, was actively trying to recover it, while this Nier observed. Nier then proceeds to taunt Light over the notebook being stolen by asking him if he has any feasible plans to retrieve the notebook. Nier also aims to broaden his profiling of L2 by judging from his reaction to the fact that at this rate, the kidnappers will undoubtedly gain possession of the notebook without any major inconvenience. At this point, Nier is truly messing with Light's emotional state, attempting to induce anxiety into his mind, so as to trick him into dropping his facade, hoping to obtain some form of information on him. L's monster speech in Death Note, however, takes the cake. L acknowledges the fact that he's been lying this whole time. It's not justice that he cares about, he just wants to win. Of course, his desire to win has helped him solve cases in the past. Thus, advancing the cause of justice, but his intentions have never been noble. Elle's detachment of human emotion has allowed him to become such a great detective. He's been able to read many people, one of the best psychoanalyzers in Death Note. This is why emotional perception goes to the lying monster, L Lolai. Since we went more in depth with L's knowledge on L vs BB, we'll try and focus more on Nero Mello, because Nero Mello were both considered to have potential to succeed L. They would have had to specialize in everything that L did a part of his training. Hence, they would at least have at least standard knowledge and understanding of all subjects I stated. L was proficient in on the last video. So you can go check that out if you want. As to knowledge they've shown in canon, business studies. This is debatable, but Mello has demonstrated his ability to hide from law enforcement as well as grow an underground mafia into a national behemoth capable of financing expensive activities all across the US implying that he is a skilled business manager slash CEO and has knowledge of shares slash stocks and bond types, as well as analyzing companies' management and policy decisions, which is required to make long-term decisions for experienced investors. Political science. We know from Nier's meeting with the President of the United States and Elle's meeting with Interpol, they both have demonstrated knowledge of other countries' political affairs, which should be at very least include the United States, the United Kingdom, and Japan. See how L knew that heart attacks began in Japan. Nier and L being able to cooperate with the US and L being able to stop the Winchester bombings at A. Humanities, Nier and Mello both had to move to a foreign country to solve the Kira case, as Winchester is a cathedral city in England. While this Japan is abroad, they would need to be proficient in Japanese to communicate with other investigative bureaus such as the MPA. Criminal, civil, and international law. When investigating a case and gathering evidence, detectives recruited by police agencies must have good understanding of the law and detectives working with Interpol must also have a solid knowledge of international law. All of this extensive knowledge pales in comparison to what L has shown. He has knowledge in microeconomics, criminal psychology, humanities, finance, accountancy, criminology, statistics, computer science, physics, and chemistry. And even if you argue that Nier and Mello would also be knowledgeable in these subjects, as they were potential successes for L, they haven't shown much expertise and proficiency in these subjects like L has. Mello making the LA Mafia rich pales in comparison to making L making Watari the richest person on the globe at just eight years old. For this reason, L takes knowledge and it's not even close. Volnir's creativity shines in his many strategies to catch light slipping, to gain information or even manipulate Mello into acting, it still pales in comparison to L, who managed to narrow down Kira from the 7 billions to just a couple people in the police force. With L being able to deduce that Kira is a student and has ties to police info. Our strategies are even more impressive when you consider the fact that he was getting information about the case as it progressed and ultimately knew nothing. He learns later on that Kira doesn't need a name or face to kill, but he didn't know of the Death Note, Shinigami, or the Shinigami Eyes. Nier and Mello knew all of this and even gained more information about the Death Note, specifically the 13 day rule being fake. And what's crazier is that despite having advantage with more information and even resources compared to Light, they still almost lost 
to light. Had it not been for Mello's amazing endgame plan, the context for Mello's final plan is that Linda has given Mello incomplete information regarding the case, but has told him that Nier is willing to bring the case to an end. This is all the information Linda would have given Mello. First, there's an ex Kira, someone doing the killings who is not El Kira, aka Lai Yagami. Two, Takata is a link of communication between ex Kira and Lai Yagami. Three, Nier has tampered with ex Kira's notebook and is going to have him write down their names in the yellow box warehouse. Four, once X Kira writes all their names aside from Light Yagami's, Ni will be able to find the evidence he needs to prove Light is Kira and arrest him alongside X Kira. The prediction that Melo makes would go something like this. Ni knows who X Kira is and has replaced the notebook he was hiding with a fake. But Melo reasons that X Kira, due to being in contact with El Kira through Takada, would have been aware of the fact that this would be the most efficient way to finalize their showdown. Melo knows that Lai believes that Ni still holds a level of pride in his method of victory, so he would go for the method that involves pinning down evidence beyond reasoning doubt against Lai and X Kira. Melo knows that Lai believes that Ni still holds a level of pride in his method of victory, so he would go for the method that involves pinning down evidence beyond reasoning doubt against Lai and X Kira first. So the only way for Nier to actually capture Kira would be to catch them in the act of writing down names or to force confession, which is pre-established. Since Light knows what Nier will do, he would have him tell X Kira, anticipating that Nier would figure out X Kira's true identity, and then have a fake notebook prepared for it. X Kira would carry this fake notebook alongside him, where one of Nier's agents telling him would gain possession of a fake notebook. This would cause Nier to fabricate a fake notebook, giving him the illusion of victory. Melo had told Nier that there's a Shinigami possessing the person who owns a notebook. So naturally, Nier would take under consideration whether there is a Shinigami possessing Mikami as it should. And since the notebook is a fake, Mikami wouldn't be seen with a Shinigami after Nier and the rest of the SBK gain possession of the notebook that they perceive as authentic. So to cover up this discrepancy, Light would have to have Mikami act as if the Shinigami's absence was temporary or strange. The notebook possessed by Mikami at this point of the story is Rems, who is now dead, but Melo doesn't know about her. Mikami would be writing names of criminals consistently on the notebook, but it would be quite strange if they wouldn't die. Remember, Melo has figured the notebook is fake, so Mikami would have Takaba doing the killings in this context, by sending her the names and faces of everyone whom he kills. So she writes them on pages that are lent to her temporary till the final day. This is important because Melo has already deduced that there are two notebooks in current activity. One in possession of the MPA and the other is in possession of Kira. So there can't be a notebook in the hands of X Kira and Takata simultaneously. Mikami will obviously detect the signs of fabrication. After X Kira confirms that the fabricated notebook has been tempered with, the final of Light's plan can be put into motion. Ni will enter the yellow box warehouse, expecting that X Kira will write down everyone's names into the notebook except Light's, which will prove both their guilt. But what would happen in actuality is that X Kira would finally bring out the real notebook to him, the real notebook to the yellow box warehouse and write everyone's name except Light's, successfully killing them. So if Melo doesn't do anything, Ni will die and Kira will stand victorious. Now Melo knows that it's vital for X Kira to conceal the existence of the real notebook from Nier and SPK, otherwise Light's plan would be screwed. But he had figured out the blueprints of Light's plan and figured out the most sensitive he could attack, that being Takada. He knows that Takada is a link of communication between X Kira and Light Yagami. Let's establish his aim first. His aim is to lay the groundwork for Kira's defeat. The fact that this was one of the major targets is also established in the HCR Volume 13. To do this, he needs to engineer a situation where he can force X Kira to reveal the location of the real notebook. And since Ni would certainly have an agent spying on X Kira to the very last day, he would inform Ni of the real notebook, and Ni would likely fabricate another copy and replace it with the real one that Melo forces X Kira to reveal. Melo has Matt drive through Takada's location with firearms and grenades, causing panic and distress. And under said distress, 
Takada's protection would be considered the main point of concern for her bodyguards. Melo knows that Linda is Takada's close bodyguard, so if he were to arrive at the scene on a motorbike and pretend to rescue Takada, Linda would play along and quickly have Takada get on Melo's motorcycle. Takada's other bodyguard, expecting Melo to be on their side, requests him to follow on alongside them, but Melo takes a turn into a narrow alleyway where the cars can't travel. He knows that the bodyguard won't shoot from behind when they realize Melo is kidnapping her because they can't take risks shooting Takada. Melo eventually drives Takada to a location distant from her initial kidnap. He does this because he had deduced she has trackers on her which alert her bodyguards of her location so he strips her naked and gets rid of all her clothes and trackers, puts them into a delivery company's goods box to misdirect the bodyguards into following a false trail and drives off with Takada to Karizawa, a town in Japan. Melo kidnaps Takada, understanding that the news will spread very quickly to Lai and Nier. Because of Melo's move, Exkira is met with an unexpected situation and is, by extension, deprived of his communic medium, Takada, with Light. Exkira would have to assume that Light is under surveillance and that, therefore, he cannot make any moves which is of course the very reason Exkira was given the notebook in the first place. Given the circumstances, Takada was stripped naked and made hostage by the kidnapper. She could end up slipping up information via threats or coercion or the SPK might end up catching up to her while she is isolated. It would be too risky to let her roam under him, so Exkira would end up killing her. Point established is that Takada's kidnapping would be considered a threat to Light's plan, which would cause Mikami to use a real notebook, revealing its location in the process. What makes this feat so impressive is that with incomplete information, zero resources, his mafia group eliminated, and no prep time whatsoever, Mela was able to predict Light and Ni's endgame, see through what Ni couldn't, and exploit the imperceptible and vague vulnerability in Light's plan masterfully. There were a few specific details he couldn't have known. For example, Takada having scraps on her at the time of the kidnapping, which caused his death due to his lack of knowledge on the death note. He also hadn't fully expected Matt to die, but he definitely knew there was a risk of him and Matt dying in the process due to the nature of their strategy and the adversity of the situation. He was burdened with making a calculated decision that would forever leave a mark on history as Kira's demise and was ready for the possibility of his death but still went in without any signs of hesitation. And in the end, it was all worth it. It was Melo's final plan that handed not just near the victory, but finally put L's work to rest. For this reason, for this reason, I believe that while this L takes strategy, Ni and Melo take planning. Though if you were to involve the novels, then L would also take planning as he pulls off some pretty crazy feats in Change the World, which we can discuss CTWL in the future. So who wins, L or Ni and Melo? Well, despite the fact that Ni and Melo are superior to L in emotional engagement, management and planning, L still takes FSIQ, emotional perception, emotional understanding, knowledge and arguably planning if you like to involve the novels. Even though Ni and Melo working together would be a competent match for L, he'd still ultimately prevail over them. Remember that Melo's unpredictability ultimately closed the case on light. By Melo messing up everyone's plan being the wild bull causing Mikami to mess up which later is blamed for light's downfall against Ni.